Since 1954, psychologists have known that contact or social interaction with members of other groups makes us like those groups more. And in 2007, Turner Crispin Lambert first demonstrated that you could get many of the same benefits by just imagining this intergroup contact. But in 2011, I and two other researchers from Oxford University, Dr. Emily Holmes of the Department of Psychiatry and Professor Miles Houston of the Department of Experimental Psychology, asked, can imagine contact reduce prejudice against people with schizophrenia? That is an important question. Imagined contact was designed as an intervention that could be used when real contact was rare or difficult. However, until then, it had always been tested using target populations with whom real contact was frequent and easy, such as gay men and older adults. Also, the target populations used in previous experiments were pretty easy to imagine pleasantly. Regardless of what the reality is, most people don't stereotype gay men and older adults as dangerous or unpredictable, but that is exactly how they stereotype people with schizophrenia. So testing Imagine Contact's ability to reduce prejudice against people with schizophrenia could be considered a more genuine test of the effectiveness of the intervention. To test whether Imagine Contact could reduce prejudice against people with schizophrenia, we copied the design of Turner, Crisp, and Lambert. They asked participants to imagine meeting a gay man, so we asked them to imagine meeting someone with schizophrenia. They asked participants to report how anxious they would feel if they met a gay man in the future. We asked them how anxious they would feel if they met someone with schizophrenia. They asked participants about their attitudes towards gay men. We asked them about their attitudes towards people with schizophrenia. They found that, after doing the Imagine Contact, participants reported less anxiety and more positive attitudes than participants in the control condition. And we found nothing of the sort. In fact, we found that, following the Imagine Contact task, participants reported more anxiety and no more positive attitudes than participants in the control condition. So Imagine Contact failed to produce the effect we wanted, and it was back to the drawing board. We tried to figure out what went wrong with Experiment 1. We had done everything the same way as Turner, Crisp, and Lambert, so why didn't it work? We figured, maybe the stereotypes about people with schizophrenia were too strong or too negative. Maybe participants were imagining negative things. If that was the case, then maybe if we gave participants some positive information about people with schizophrenia first, that would change what they imagined and make the imagined contact successful. So that's what we did. We created a 2x2 two two design in which we gave half the participants positive information about people with schizophrenia and then had them do either the imagined contact task or the control task. We collected the data, did an analysis of variance, and found... The same thing as last time. The positive information did all the right things. Participants who had read the positive information reported less anxiety and more positive attitudes. But imagined contact was still doing the wrong things. After the imagined contact task, participants still reported more anxiety and no more positive attitudes. So again, it was back to the drawing board. Giving participants positive information before the imagined contact didn't work. So we thought, why not embed the positive information in the task itself? Constrain the task. Make sure that the participants imagine positive things and that they can't just discard the positive information and go on to imagine something negative. That's what we did. We constrained the setting, made it an elite dinner party, and we constrained the person they would be interacting with. Instead of imagining whomever they wanted, they were instructed to imagine a conversation with Dr. Rufus May, a psychologist who has schizophrenia. Then we measured their anxiety and attitudes, and this time, everything worked. After the imagined contact task, participants reported less anxiety and more positive attitudes than the control participants. Furthermore, using regression analyses, we found that the effects of imagined contact and attitudes were mediated by the change in intergroup anxiety. So we were on the right track, but still, we did one more experiment. We wanted to make sure that the participants were responding to the imagined contact and not to some unintentional confound in our design, like the information given to them about Dr. Rufus May. We did that by giving all participants the same information and then making half of them do the imagined contact task. This time the setting was a train station, and the person they were interacting with was Tom Harrow, a jazz musician who has schizophrenia. All participants received information about Tom Harrow, but only half of them were instructed to imagine interacting with him. And when we ran the analyses, we found that this experiment was as successful as the last. 
Participants who had completed the Imagine Contact task reported less anxiety and more positive attitudes than participants in the control condition. And again, we found that the effects of Imagine Contact on attitudes were mediated by the change in intergroup anxiety. We had figured out how to make Imagine Contact reduce prejudice against people with schizophrenia, and for now, we could call it a day. We showed that Imagine Contact can reduce prejudice against people with schizophrenia, but we also found that it doesn't always work. It seems to work better when you constrain the Imagine Contact task to ensure that participants are imagining something positive. We don't interpret this as a strike against Imagine Contact. On the contrary, we acknowledge that there will always be conditions under which something works, and conditions under which it doesn't work. By figuring out these conditions, we're adding to the body of knowledge about Imagine Contact and helping to make it a more effective intervention. This research was funded in part by the Rhodes Trust. If you want to cite this research, you can cite it as West Holmes and Houston 2011, Enhancing Imagine Contact to Reduce Prejudice Against People with Schizophrenia, published in the journal Group Processes and Intergroup Relations, issue 14, page 407 to 428. There's a lot of detail in the paper that I left out of the video, so if you're a psychologist or a psychology student, you probably want to read the paper. The music you're hearing is played by Tom Harrell, a real jazz musician who is really good and who really has schizophrenia. As always, I love feedback, so feel free to send me a YouTube message or an email. I am, after all, a social psychologist, so I like to know what you think. Take care.